Welcome to the Tradie Wife Life podcast, brought to you by Tradies in Business, where we talk to tradie wives about their goals, their challenges, their hopes and dreams, and how their trade business can help with that. Hello, listeners. Welcome back. I have another real tradie wife story today. I have another of our wonderful clients, Linda from Base Metal Fabrication, who is going to be talking with me today specifically about personal development and self-care. Linda and her amazing partner, Tim, have been working with us for, gosh, you must be coming up four years now, Linda, or very close to. And during that time, we have seen the two of them make a massive transformation and probably the the most favorite part of my transformation is their continued uh, commitment to their personal development, both individually and then as a couple and as a couple in business. Linda, thank you very much for joining me today. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Linda's feeling a little bit of trepidation about being here. She, I think perhaps she thinks I might hoodwink her into something here, but I promise, Linda, I'm going to hold your hand all the way through. Linda, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your amazing family and perhaps um, a bit about your journey into working with Tim at Base Metal Fab? Okay. Yeah. So Tim and I have three daughters, um, ages 12, 16 and 17. So over the young parenting journey now and into the teenage years, um, I have always been alongside Tim um, with the business from, yeah, when it started. Um, so developing the business name and getting an ABN. Um, I did have my own job in the past and I probably thought that I would keep my own job and do the business stuff as well. But over the years, I've come to realize that, um, yeah, being full-time in the business was going to work really well for us. Mm-hmm. So jumped in to do that. I didn't realize you guys started this together. I don't know how that's never come up in conversation over four years, but clearly it has not, or I've forgotten, which we've realized recently I do from time to time. Um, so how long has base metal fabrication been in business for? Oh gosh. Um, I don't, oh, I don't really know. Originally it was a sole trader. So probably yep. back in 2009, yep. I think. Um, yeah, Tim bought a truck and a welder and started out on his own mobile welding. Um, I was very nervous about it at the time um, because we had a young family and it was a big jump and a big commitment. Um, and from there, yeah, it developed into different entities, so into a trust and then into a company that it is today. Yeah, Linda, I wonder, that is a pretty precarious stage to go into business when you've got a young family. Was that a big motivator to staying in your own job? Ah, uh, for me, yeah, definitely, yeah, hundred percent. Just to relieve some of the financial or those cash flow woes that we see so very frequently, right in the back in the beginning of starting a business, it can feel really um, exposing. And when you have a young family and you, you know, as a mum, I'm relating to you as a mum now and thinking about, oh, I think I'd feel exactly the same way if it was me right back in the beginning. And I, I full disclosure, I had um, two children, and we had a business. With my first husband, we had a business at the time and I constantly felt that fear around money at that time. Um, I never joined him in the business, fortunately, although it didn't work for our marriage regardless. But um, I can just imagine how scary that time must be. And then I can I can only begin to imagine what the pressure must have felt like then when you're trying to deal with a family, with your own job, and then assisting Tim with what he was doing at that stage. How did you make the decision to go from being employed separately to jumping in and working with Tim as what you were doing full time? Um, that was probably a long way down the track, actually, um, to get to that point. Um, and it was just, I think for me, a thought process that really shifted and changed over the years um, that if we were doing business together, we could really make it what we wanted it to be. Um, I probably felt like I wasn't a good employee either when I had a young family. It was very tricky to navigate a job and family and, you know, sickness with kids. Um, So I thought that if, yeah, being in the business together that, yeah, we'd be able to um, sort of create our life around that. 
And it was probably Tim that instigated those thoughts in my head um, that we could do that together. Is that what it was like for you guys right from the very beginning? Uh, no, there were lots of challenges, uh, <laughs> learning learning to work together and live together. Um, we feel pretty good with it now um, and I think it is through the business coaching predominantly that we've done that we've really found our strengths and weaknesses to be able to work together. Mm. Yeah, it took us a while to sort of, yeah, learn how to work alongside each other. It's it's not easy. It's tough. I, I have the benefit of working with someone who is not my husband. And I still find it hard. He, I have no doubt he would say the same thing. Uh, and we don't have to go home at the end of the day together and navigate children together and the rest of life together and still try and remain connected. We get to come to work, to our work. We chat all weekend. Like it never stops much like a normal business conversation doesn't stop with any partnership. However, we have the benefit of other partners to give us some space um, and we have our own individual families and lives and that really makes a big difference, I think, trying to navigate that working together and living together is a huge deal that I don't think any of us think about it. We, Many of us think blindly, oh, we get along all right, we'll be fine to work together. But it's such a different relationship working together than being a couple together. Would you agree? A hundred percent, yes. And so how did you find, what sort of pressure points were there for you, for the two of you in the beginning that would create, you know, those little flare-ups that we have? Um, Yeah, in the beginning, I probably struggled to feel connected to the business, I suppose, um, because I was stepping into, I guess, very much a male-dominated environment, um, a team of tradies that had at that point worked together on the tools alongside each other. Um, and we're a very, I guess, tiny group of people. Mm-hmm. And so then we, I guess the catalyst for me coming into the business also was that we bought a workshop, our own workshop to set up in. So we had a space and I had an office and we had the room to grow. Mm-hmm. So it was then that we grew the team. Tim spent more time in the office. Um, so yeah, me yeah, feeling connected to the business at the time. And then also, yeah, Tim and I, I guess communication probably, um, yeah, business communication, family communication, life communication, just kind of all meshed together at the start until we found our feet a bit. I love that. I would love you to, for our listeners, I'm really wary that I know so much about you guys, but our listeners know very little about you and Tim. And so I'd love you to share what your role looks like in the company now because it has grown and progressed quite significantly over the time you have been working together. Yeah, it has. And that's probably as the business has grown. So, um, yeah, now I probably have a part in just about everything except for the building of the stuff or the doing of the work. Mm. Um, Yeah, so, you know, all the small business related stuff. So overseeing the accounts the HR, you know, thinking about the marketing, thinking about sales, thinking about just all the avenues and all the aspects of small business. It's a big shift. Uh, and I think you were directly responsible at first in the inst- first instance of um, deciding to develop yourselves as business owners and reach out to us as your coaches. Um, my favorite shift in all of our communities, the shift in Tim and how, uh, like most fellas that come to work with us here at TIB, they're a bit like, well, what is this stuff and how is it going to work for me? And Tim's turnaround has been the most dramatic I've ever seen in a male ever. His shift is absolutely incredible. And I directly contribute a lot of that to you, Linda, and your drive for, constant development and I think that that falls across all avenues for you both personally and professionally Uh, I wonder what have you always been that kind of person that's interested in the continual development of self or is it something that you came across at a point in your life Um, I've probably always been a learner and curious about stuff I tend to read a lot and know little bits and pieces about stuff so I've always been like that um, I, yeah, probably have really always liked like the business of uh, business side of things as well. Um, and yeah, I'm not too sure. I guess, um, 
yeah, just being part of the business as well um, and seeing what we can do together um, and seeing what potential the business has has sort of driven me to, yeah, do more self-development and business development. Curiosity is my favourite word and I it's not often that it's identified. So I love that curiosity is what has driven you to know a little bit about a lot of things and it's quite a powerful position to be in. When I was a kid, my dad would tell me it was dreadful and I think he's wrong. I'd still tell him that now. Uh, because I think that knowing a little bit about a lot of things opens the door to that opportunity for curiosity so that you have this position in your life where you're able to identify that, oh, I don't think this looks like the way I want it to and I know where to go for help or I know what sort of questions to ask to drive that change for me. Is that what it was? What? Well, no, I'll ask a question a different way. What led you to looking for a business coach to help you guys do business? I think it was... We were probably struggling working together um, and I had sort of been on the outer for a while scouting around for a business coach and starting to listen to podcasts and starting to realise that business coaches were a thing and could help us in business. And yeah, just from the research that I did and the reading that I was doing, I knew that that was an avenue that that was really going to help us. Mm, love it. All right, let's talk about personal development because this, um, as I was saying to you off air, I don't know anyone in our community that drives their own personal development and self-care in a way that you do. It seems to be something that's not only consistent for you, but has become a consistent for your family. And I wanted to talk about the fact that you have three kids. Is it 12, 16 and 17? Have I got everyone's ages right? Yes, so Correct. Super busy time of life. I don't think there's any time when you have kids that um, isn't busy. And uh, I, I happen to know because I'm observing you regularly, super busy time of life. It's really hard to continue for that to be a priority. Has that always been a priority for you, Linda? Probably not, no. So a few years ago, I had a large health diagnosis, a cancer diagnosis. Um, so that probably shifted my perception on life a lot. Yeah, so from there on in, I think self-care, um, yeah, fitness and health has really been a priority for me and for the family. Mm. It, was it a conscious decision for the family? I I look at it and I think um, I'm not entirely sure that my family, they're a bit older than yours, but I'm not sure they would follow my lead on this and they're pretty, well, not all of them, but most of them are pretty healthy anyway, but I'm not, I'm not sure, maybe I'm too late to have that kind of influence on the kids and for you and your family, did you sit down together and have a family discussion and make this a priority for all of you? Or was it through your demonstration that the kids decided they wanted to jump on board? It was probably through my demonstration, I think. Um, it, And I probably consciously did that as well because I wanted to be, um, I guess, a kind of role model for them to look after their own health. So, yeah, it was um, I started yeah doing a few little things, um, so fitness training, and then, yeah, two of the kids did actually say, oh, hey, we want to do this as well. Could we do a, a family session? So, yeah, from there it's evolved into a few different things that we do. But tell us about self-care for you. How do you make time for it? And what are you making time for on a regular basis? Um, so, well, Tim and I do a reformer Pilates session once a week. So that's booked into our calendar. Um, I do group fitness training at least once a week. Um and that's just, it's on the family calendar. So everybody knows that it's happening and they need to work around it. Uh, we do a family uh, group training session on a Sunday afternoon as well. So it's um, a priority for the family and it's bonding time as well as fitness and health. And I think it's uh, really good for the kids for us all to be doing it. Mm. And yeah, I see... Well, I see a naturopath, so I have health reviews. I do my medical checks. I take supplements. Um, yeah, just all that sort of stuff. It's just a non-negotiable. You just wake up every morning knowing that you're going to do X, Y, Z today because it's just part of your routine. Correct. I think I've created the habits for myself. And same, I get up, I jump on the treadmill. It's only a short walk. It's only 10 minutes. But, yeah, back when I started doing that, I just set my alarm 15 minutes earlier and I just got up and I knew I had to do it to me for my own health and I knew that doing it, um, 
yeah, it made me feel better for the day. So I just continue with it. What do you think stopped you from making those same decisions before your diagnosis? Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't have, well, I was still doing some of the stuff, but not all of the stuff. Um, and I probably, yeah, ramped it up, I suppose, since the diagnosis, because I know how important health yeah. is. Um, and yeah, I guess I have a new appreciation for life and a new perception on life, I suppose. Um, yeah, I just know how important it is to look after yourself and care for yourself. It's just so fragile, isn't it? And I don't know, there's some things that are still very much in our control. And unfortunately, I see a community of people, and I'm talking broadly about the trades here, that neglect their own self-care because they are so busy trying to make a buck. They're so busy trying to put food on the table for the family or to find the free time to spend with the kids or one another as a couple. And so we tend to sacrifice the stuff that is most important to us. Um, Linda, what is... Out of the things that you do do, so you've got your reformer Pilates with Tim. Fancy that, listeners. Like, how cool is that? That's gold standard going to exercise with your partner every week. But then doing it with your family as well. So having your um, PT session on a Sunday afternoon is just incredible. I can only drag my kids to do something with me once a year. That's Mother's Day because they have no choice. It's an obligation. I gave birth to you. Now you come to Pilates once a year. This year, I'm very proud to say they're bringing their partners as well. So we've booked out the entire class for the morning so that we all get a turn on the reformer. But to be doing that as a consistent every week, um, your own personal PT training so that you are also taking care of yourself and prioritizing yourself, but then making sure that you've got your health checks in order, spending time with your naturopath, um, taking your supplements. Out of all of those, what does that do for you on a weekly basis? Like I'm looking for maybe not quite so much how it makes you feel physically as in how it makes you feel internally, which is a really strange paradigm and very difficult to come across the two. But I think that there is a difference between feeling fit and strong as there is feeling powerful or there is feeling a di- a strength rather than feeling strong. I can lift heavy, heavy things. How does it sit for you, Linda? Yeah, I probably... I probably didn't notice until sometimes through life some of that stuff drops off and then I notice when I'm not doing it that I don't feel great Mm. internally. I don't feel as well equipped to handle uh, business and life and, yeah, I just I probably feel stronger mentally when I do it, yeah, more capacity like mentally um, when I'm doing all the things and when it drops off. Uh, which it does from time to time, and then I get back on track. Yeah, I really notice it when I don't do it. Mm, I love that. So if you've never done it, listeners, you're not going to notice that it's making a difference until you do it for a while. So you just have to make the commitment to do it. Linda, I really like that you identified that you set your alarm earlier to be able to start moving your body, and it was only 10 minutes, but it was where you started. Can you tell me from a family perspective how that was received when that was the decision that you made? Um, back then it didn't matter. It wasn't affecting anyone else. It was only me. It was my sleep. It was affecting, um, but then it was my health and my fitness and my choice. The rest of the family, well, Tim was at work by that time of the morning. Um, the children weren't needing to get ready quite at that time. So I just packed it onto the beginning of the day before the day started really. I think there's a a tendency, you and I were talking about this briefly before we we went on air. There's a tendency for us to allow ourselves to be too busy and not to make this a priority. Um, Sleep's precious. I don't want to deny to anybody that sleep's precious. And 15 minutes earlier on your alarm um, is not going to make a significant difference negatively in terms of impact at the end of your day when you're feeling tired because you've taken the time to do the exercise and suddenly you're actually feeling quite refreshed. And as you have pointed out really well, Linda, mentally able to deal with more of the stress that comes across our plate every day. So I encourage you, if you're listening and you're not currently doing something to shift your body every day, to spend 15 minutes of your lunch break, if you get a lunch break, moving your body or get up 15 minutes earlier. It does only need to be 10 minutes. It doesn't need to be significant. It's about creating that habit. And before you know it, you're actually looking for a little bit more. Uh, It's incredible how quickly it goes from doing something once a week to wanting to do it twice a week or three times a week or going from 10 minutes to 15 minutes to 20 minutes, those incremental changes are much 
easier to implement into your day than that very first time you get up 15 minutes early. That's really, really hard. But after that, it's so much better in terms of how it's going to make you feel throughout the day. And I think that um, it's just got to be a priority for all of us because we can't handle stress. Modern day stress is so different than the stress our ancestors had. They were dealing with bears and tigers and snakes and spiders and all those other dreadful things that meant that we dipped into fight or flight and dipped back out. It wasn't the continuous stress that we have now as women, um, particularly, and men too, of course. However, we we talk mostly about the wife here, so the, the women in our community. We have the stress of running a business. We've got the stress of taking care of our families, the stress of being in a relationship, the stress of trying to find some time and prioritize ourselves. Um, that turns into a massive load of stress that we're dealing with on a day to day that significantly impacts our health. And so not creating time for you to have that stress reduction in your day and fully equip yourself to be able to deal with stress differently will create a negative impact for you in your life one way or the other. 15 minutes is not a lot of time. Linda, um, Around stress, I know that you do a lot of other self-development from listening to podcasts and reading and, and that continuation of curiosity and learning. Have you found other ways that have worked well for you with your stress reduction on a day-to-day? Because you're in peak stress mode right now with three kids that are, uh, well, two of the three still at school. The third is just navigating life fresh out of school. You're still running the business. You're employing people. You're dealing with their stress as well as your own stress. You're still working with Tim. Uh, you've just bought a new property, which has brought about a lot of stress. Moving is not fun. What What are you finding is a consistent for you in helping you deal with the everyday stress? Um, I think it's just, yeah, maintaining consistency with my habits. So with my, um, my exercise, my eating, things that I enjoy doing as well. So reading, making the time for reading. Yeah, booking holidays, knowing that we've got um, – time coming up when we're going away and we're doing something um, together as a family yeah and also sleep sometimes it's not great Um, that's something that do try to focus on Um, yeah just maintaining consistency with all that I think is important for me and how I deal and navigate with this today stresses so you mentioned habits and creating new habits. Is there a trick for you for how you've created a habit and stuck with a habit? Oh, I don't think any trick. I think, um, yeah, just just starting it and then just um, continuing it. But I don't, yeah, think I've got any special tricks. It's just discipline. But some people discipline works really well. For other people, they've got a habit stack and for others, they need somebody to hold them accountable. So I think some of us are really good at being disciplined. That's not me. I spoke recently about my very complicated relationship with discipline. I um, actually don't think it's discipline that ever gets me out of bed to walk the dog every morning. It's her face if I don't walk her. So it's accountability. And it's not discipline that gets me to Pilates four days a week. It's the disappointment on my friends' faces when I'm at, if I don't make it to Pilates or the little messages I get after, oh, I missed you today. Is everything Okay. So again, it's accountability, but some of us are just really good at discipline. Is that something that shows up for you in lots of areas of your life? Oh, I don't know. I think for me, it's probably, um, I think the motivation for me to continue with it is the way that I feel, I suppose. And um, yeah, life itself, I suppose, um, just having that perspective on life that it is precious and that, yeah, we need to look after ourselves to be yeah, getting the best out of ourselves and enjoying life in the best way. Love that. And uh, still wouldn't work, wouldn't be enough for me. (laughs) I need somebody to hold me accountable. That's terrible, isn't it? Okay, Linda, I would love to, um, I promise we wouldn't talk too much about Tim. And I think it would be, there'd be a lot of ladies out there listening, thinking, oh, I wish my partner would just do X, Y, Z with me or because of me or around me. And Tim, um, does a lot of, you know, it's become a real priority for him to take care of himself and create these habits for himself. Do you contrib- that, contribute that to your leading your way through that with him? So again, by example, or was it something that you two consciously decided on? Um, yeah, on, refre- on reflection, probably because I was doing it, then he probably got an insight and then made his own decisions and his own choices to yeah create his own 
habits, I suppose, and his own self-care. I, I love that. And I feel as though uh, you do, the two of you do a really good job of giving each other permission to take what is necessary. And I don't often see that. I see a bit of lip service for that kind of stuff, but I don't actually see it show up. And I see for you guys uh, an enormous respect for one another and what's needed for each of you uh, individually and together to create the outcome that you're currently creating. You really are the quiet achievers in our community. Uh, and I'm uh, consistently in awe of the two of you creating these commitments, whether you do them mindfully or not, to continue to improve. And it's not something we see all the time. It's something we see in short bursts, I think, generally from most people, even myself. I'm a bit of a short burst improver, not a long-term uh, seeker of um, improvement. So I think it's a great example that you said. I hope that today's podcast has provided some insight for those who are listening around how they can begin to incorporate some self-care into their own um, daily activities. It's very easy for us to make excuses, not so easy for us just to, you know, make it a priority to take that time out from our family every day. Linda, are there some parting words that you would like to leave with our listeners around self-care or personal development? Oh gosh, you should have prepped me for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I really should have, but it's come to me. Oh, um, I don't know. I guess I, yeah, always just think that that is, yeah, super important to everybody and particularly tradies and particularly guys, I think, in our environment. We've seen our whole team sort of come on board with some of the work that we've been doing, the improvements like personal improvement, self-improvement, um, and the whole team has kind of jumped on board and really um, we can we can see the change in the team, I suppose, um, which, yeah, is really good. Mm, totally. So lead by example. I think that's your your little piece of advice that I've taken out of that one, Linda. Lead by examples. It starts with you. If you're listening to this today and you don't have a regular routine that takes care of your self-care, your personal development and your mental health, now's the time to consider what that might look like for you because it's part of your legacy. Uh, it's a very big part of who you are and how you teach others to be and the changes that they're able to make in their own lives. Linda, I hope that wasn't half as painful as it felt when you jumped on with me this morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Nick. And thank you for listening. 